Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on UFT. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching UFT tutorial series. This is a continuation of the part one of the regular expression. So if in case you have missed the part one, I would recommend you can go back to the part one and come back here. But this is a standalone part of it. If you still know the basics of regular expression, you can watch this video. So, without wasting much of your time, uh, we would just like to quickly move into the hands-on session here, which will allow you to understand that how it, regular expressions can be used in the uh, example with an application. So, here we have got a new test and we are understanding the same with an application. In previous tutorial, how to, I told you like how to use, uh, how to understand regular expression to create it and how to evaluate it with help of the regular expression evaluator which is in tools regular expression evaluator today we'll be understanding in this tutorial about how to use it so for that i need an application and i'll be recording certain process which would give me a dynamic data so i need to go with john the password as hp okay uh, let's figure out some values say Port San Francisco and uh, remember UFT captures only those steps which you record okay it does not capture any object value until unless you interact with it so click on this and select flight give a passenger name like Alex is traveling and click on order now if you see this is a order number which is being generated 92 and now it's been understood very well from so far like if you have been watching the tutorial that until unless we full, uh, fulfill all the information and we come to this uh, order number will not be generated. And every time I read on the test, it will automatically generate a new number. So this is a dynamic data which is being generated every time I complete a transaction. So let me just close this and stop recording. So how do I deal with it? So for example, when I come to the order page and active screen, I'm talking about the order number which is being generated. So. Uh, this is a dynamic data because if I repeat the test now, it will show me 93. And again, if I run the test, it will show me 94. So what if I want to fetch this information or I would like to bypass this information, then I cannot bypass. So what I do is to check this or I create a parameter to run for different iterations, then I'll get stuck with the value. So we can use regular expression here. And to do that with help uh, for an application, you have to come to resources. Resources, object repository. And you have to find out that object which is dealing with it. So say for example, I first create a checkpoint for this particular value. Okay. And uh, click in standard checkpoint. And this is for uh, the same object. Oh, no, it's for the parent. Ah, I told you that it can not be added for that particular application. So anyways, let me just go ahead and verify the by moving quickly to the application and doing it one more time. I should have done it before. So uh, that basically helps you to understand what common mistakes we can make. So all I need to reach is that particular page. So I'm skipping all other steps because we already have the script for that. Click on order and I'll be having a step here. So now let's move to recording because I want to capture it as a checkpoint and uh, click on standard checkpoint. Now you know what standard checkpoint is. All right, and say okay. And what I want to compare is the name, which is name is the value which is containing the value of the order number parameter. So that's going to be this and say okay. And then stop recording. So now you should be having before closing this. So if your cursor is not at the right point, please come back and uh, move the step to somewhere before that. For example, after getting the order, you verify this and then close the application. So now if I run this, of course, the next iteration will be 94. So you got an idea as well when I was trying to repeat the activity. So that is where we need to understand how repositories or the regular expression can be dealt with. So I have to come to this particular object which I have been using here or to understand and come to the checkpoint because checkpoint is the one which is going to look for that value and what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this and instead of using the standard fixed value I'm going to use uh, backslash D and the number of digits 2 
and close the curly brackets. And that's a standard regular expression to deal with such things. And you just tick this box to enable and then make UFT understand that I'm using a regular expression here. Then you will get a prompt. Do you want to add backslash before each special character in order to treat it literally? Because they are thinking that order and completed is also a regular expression. I said no. They are not the uh, regular expressions. And say okay. That's all. Let's try to run it. And uh, you have to give an application on the launch. So because it starts from there. Let's see if we have a, any type of issue because I'm expecting an issue which I want to show you. Okay, it's a checkpoint. You will be having a timeout of 10 seconds so you won't have a problem, don't worry. So now it is order number 94 and uh, let's see our checkpoint passes or fails. Okay, so the checkpoint says uh, it has failed. Let's see what is the reason. Actual was empty. Expected. Oh, I did something wrong. Okay, let, let us try one more time. I think I made a simple mistake here. Oh, I didn't treat it as a regular expression. Okay. So let's make it completely a regular expression, which would be the best thing because sometimes it does not read the partial value, partial combination. So it says five strings. So capital S, number of characters are five. Close the curly bracket, backspace, small s for white space, number of digits two, then again white space, uh, that is small s, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you have a capital string. Now, number of occurrence is nine. Lux, that's okay. Uncheck, check again, say yes. Oops, sorry. Um, so. Okay, so regular expression, no, say so okay. And uh, let's try running this with the application now. And hopefully we should get a pass status this time. Now, still not the same. Okay, one last try because uh, what I was actually asking you that maybe I can face a problem. It is maybe that. Let me just try with this. Sometimes it's crazy, you know. And yes, that was the issue. So why do you get a blank output there? Uh, this because uh, uh, that's absolutely fine because we have this step for 93, but it was actually on 96 and it has passed. So generally what I, I told you earlier uh, in the tutorial that I'm expecting an error and that is what it was. So it was showing us the blank. The reason is by the time it reaches this line number 13, it has already been to checkpoint and it has not captured the data and uh, the application was busy generating the order number because if you see there's a delay between I click on the order button and uh, 
till the order number is generated. So of course, for that we give a delay between the execution by adding a step called as wait, wait for the following number of seconds. So I just get a random, random number of seconds, which basically hold it or pause the execution for that many number of seconds. So the syntax here is wait followed by the number of seconds. So generally it will pause the execution for five seconds and then move to the next line by the time data is already generated. So when it moves there, it captures. So anyways, this is what it is. So it's not so easy when you move to the advanced understanding of UFT and we'll be getting into more difficult and complicated things hereafter. So I need your better attention and understanding on this. So in case you have any situations, any queries, any doubts, clarification about any of the regular expression, feel free to comment it below. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel, which will help you get updates about my latest videos on different technologies and UFT as well. We will be having some more tutorials on UFT here, and we'll be then getting started with another series of VB script, which is to write the control flow. So till then, keep learning, keep practicing, keep exploring about UFT. Thanks for watching, team. Happy learning.